John Alzheimer is known as one of our nation's most recognized credit experts. Having worked for 28 years in the credit industry, John has become one of the most prolific speakers about credit and the go-to authority on answers to credit-related questions. Credit Countdown with John Alzheimer. Hello, my name is John Alzheimer. I am a consumer credit expert in, in the credit industry for almost 30 years. Spent time at FICO, which is the credit scoring company, and Equifax, which is one of the generally recognized credit reporting agencies. All right, today we're going to talk about what happens when you apply for a credit card. So we're going to talk about the application process, try to get you a little bit more educated on what happens behind the scenes. I think sometimes when we apply for credit cards, probably all the time when we apply for credit cards, that we're sitting in our computer, you know, we're tap, 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 we find a credit card that we think we like, that we think we want. We just, you know, fill out some information online and we click submit or apply, however the button reads. And then magically, a week or two later, a credit card uh, either shows up in the mail or we get a letter indicating that we've been denied for a credit card. You know, what happened between the time where you clicked submit and the time you either got your credit card or you were denied. So let's talk about that. So obviously all credit card issuers, this isn't not specific to credit card issuers, just specific to lenders in general, they want you to make application. That application can either be written or it can be done online using an online form. You're gonna be asked for a variety of information, name, address, social, date of birth. If you haven't lived in the house that you're, where you've lived for two years, they're gonna want your former address. They're gonna want some information about your income. So. Are you employed? What's your income? And the reason they're asking for that is because the CARD Act, the Credit Card Accountability, Responsibility, and Disclosure Act of 2009 now requires credit card issuers to confirm that you have the capacity or the ability to make payments on credit. And so that's why they're asking you for your income. Plus, they also want to know if you have the capacity to take on you know, new debt or a new debt obligation because it doesn't make sense for a lender to give you money if you can't pay them back. So they're gonna make you or ask you to make application. The byproduct of making the application is you're going to either click I agree or you're gonna check in some boxes. And one of those boxes undoubtedly is going to contain language indicating that the credit card issuer is going to want to pull your credit reports and or credit scores. So you're going to agree to allow them to do that, which means you will be giving them what's called permissible purpose. Permissible purpose is a phrase from the Fair Credit Reporting Act, and a permissible purpose is essentially a fancy way of saying, you know, a condition by which a credit report can legally be accessed by another party or provided by a credit reporting agency. So when you fill out the application, you essentially give the credit card issuer a permissible purpose to pull your credit reports. This is where the fun begins. The credit report and the credit score or scores are going to be delivered to the credit card issuer. Most credit card issuers, especially the big boys, have automated application processing systems. So they actually already have logic, approved deny logic, already built into their processing systems. It's gonna make the decision about your application without any human intervention. So your credit report and credit score information is gonna be fed into the application processing system. If you exceed their requirements, you're gonna be approved. If you do not exceed the requirements, you're going to be denied, all right? This is all referred to as the risk assessment or underwriting process where they're procuring credit reports and credit scores. And so essentially, you're applying for credit with a bank that may not even have a branch in your state and the decision is being made by a computer that is in another state where you don't even live. So that's the value of automated underwriting systems and credit reports and scores is you don't have to sit there face to face with somebody in order to underwrite a, a credit application any longer. It can be done. You can have a relationships with multiple lenders that, it, that don't even have physical representation in your state. Once they make their decision, I mean, there's only three decisions that can be made. They can either say yes and approve your application which is what you want, obviously. They can say, no, you don't meet our minimum standards, therefore we're gonna deny you outright. Or it's a close enough call where they're gonna give you what's called a counter offer, which means that if you asked for a credit card with, you know, like a platinum card with a $30,000 limit, but your credit didn't justify that type of product, 
they may come back and counter offer with something else. Well, I can't give you platinum at 30,000, but I can give you a classic credit card with a $2,500 limit. So they haven't denied you that they've given you what's called a counter offer. And then you, now the ball's back in your court and you can decide whether or not you wanna take that offer. If you wanna say, no, 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 I wanted what I originally asked for. If they say yes, we go to step four, which means you're about to get your money, meaning that they're gonna send you the card in the mail. Uh, if you had an authorized user, their card is gonna come in the mail as well. Obviously you go through the process of activating the card, which I think we've all done a million times, so there's no need in explaining how that works. If you were given a no decision or a counter offer decision, then you're gonna get something referred to as a notice of adverse action you also may get something called a risk-based pricing notice or an RBP. A risk-based pricing notice is generally sent when you get a counter offer and this notice communicates to you and indicates that you have been given an offer that other people have not gotten because they have better credit and therefore they've gotten better offers. So this just basically tells you that other people are getting better deals than you and it's likely because of your credit. If the answer was straight up no, you're gonna get an adverse action notice. And most people just call those denial letters. The adverse action notice is gonna indicate a couple of things. Number one, it's gonna tell you that you've been denied. It's gonna thank you for your application. Number two, it's going to let you know where they got the credit report. So they have to identify the name of the credit reporting agency. They're also gonna tell you what your score was, not a score, the score that they got from the credit reporting agency doesn't necessarily mean that the score was used as the basis for the decision. You may have been denied because you didn't fill out the application properly or because you don't have an income, but they're required to give you this information. It has to be included on an adverse action notice. So people always think when they get these notices, oh, I was denied because my credit score was too low. Mm -mm, not true at all. You'd be denied because you didn't fill out the application completely. I know we're talking about credit cards, but if it's a mortgage loan, you may not make enough money to afford the debt that you're gonna incur on the mortgage. So you have to really read the letters to get an idea of exactly why you were denied. But that's pretty much it. Once you get your adverse action notice, you could certainly reapply. You can go to another competing credit card issuer and apply with them, or you can work on improving your credit and just reapply with the, the same issuer sometime down the road. So thank you for your time. If you have any comments or questions, leave them in the section below. We'll talk again soon. For more videos and credit tips from John Olsheimer, go to www.tradelinesupply.com.